The glow of the welder's torch burns brightly as it mends what the flames of competition wrought in Canfield, Ohio. 10,000 pound trucks tossed like Tonka toys around a patio. Chassis crunched, parts sheared, as brute horsepower and gravity lost in negotiations with an unyielding fairground surface that bargains not with men who speak with a heavy right foot. Power featuring the best in MTRA monster truck racing. Today, from the Canfield Fairgrounds in Canfield, Ohio, it's the Dodge Monster Drag. The last time here at the Canfield Fairgrounds, we saw a lot of destruction in qualifying for the Dodge Monster Drags, and the Dodge Boys were not exempt. In fact, Rampage broke the chassis in several spots, but they have bounced back. Ken Deppy driving to a round one victory, and his teammate. Fred Schaefer in barefoot is also the fast qualifier. The Dodge boys are putting their best foot forward here in Canfield. And here with more in the competition is Army Armstrong. Be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. You know, the monster truck drivers chasing these pinned up point series, they know that Canfield, Ohio is a the track they've been looking for all year long because they can finally dial all the horsepower into the vehicle, not have to worry about taking horsepower away and use all this horsepower. The clay at this track is phenomenal. It's actually used for pulling events, so they know the track will hold the horsepower. As a matter of fact, it's a little bit drier today. The air density is great. Everything is online for a big horsepower day. So even though this may look like a flat Kansas mile behind me, this thing is nothing more than the firmer road and there will be a war fought here today. Top five qualifiers, as we say, Fred Schaefer is the quick one, then Dan Runty, Eric Meager, Gary Porter, and Kirk Dabney. Now some highlights from round one. Pam Botters in the near lane taking on Kirk Dabney. Remember, the two men in the semis last race with Botters taking out the overkill truck. Now here in that dangerous near lane, she punches out Dabney and has some difficulty getting the truck whoa before she talked to Army Armstrong. He's got a real good motor guy, like I said before, that's been tuning in on our motor. He's got it running up to 100%, and uh, we're just out there giving everything we can give. How about the driver? Are you comfortable with this? Yeah, I'm real comfortable. You know, they're uh, telling me what to go, my RPMs and stuff. They're, you know, walking me through the uh, course, what's, what's the way the truck should be handling, and everything just seems to be clicking right now, and I'm real proud of it. Well, I talked about the Rampage win at the top of the show. Now, here it is, but I want you to watch this rough landing once again from round one competition. Man, they are tearing up some iron here this weekend in Canfield Army. Eric Meager taking on Mark Hall. Hall, you might recall, also sustained some damage in our last show from Canfield. Eric Meager goes on to lay down the low ET of round one with this pass. There it is at a 5-0-2 low ET for round one. So now the round two tree, Kirk Dabney and Paul Schaefer will come back as the fast losers of round one. You can see the matchups there for round two competition here in Canfield. Fred Schaefer, who took out Sampson in round one, pulls up the line as we head into round two competition. Fred Schaefer, there he is from Pontoon Beach, Illinois, near the uh, St. Louis, Missouri area, and he will take on uh, Kirk Dabney. Now, Dabney's one of the strong privateers we've been hearing so much about. Was really hoping to have a great year, but out of the box, first race of the year, did a lot of damage to the truck. It's been fighting its way back. Meanwhile, the Dodge boys, like we said earlier, Gary, they finally have a track they can put all this little naughty horsepower hemi motors down and make them well on the other end. And Schaefer is so confident of the run, he goes into what we would call the bad lane. Oh, and Schaefer has a problem in that bad lane. He's way off course, and he gets disqualified. How costly for Fred Schaefer, the fast qualifier, and now he's out of competition. He'll lose a lot of points, and this is really a shot to his effort to take this Panda Points Championship. Watch again, mid-track, the big Dodge Hemi veers off to his right, he's off course, and he gets disqualified right here. A costly mistake for Fred Schaefer. He'll be a spectator the rest of the afternoon. He's with Army. 
be a privateer, Dabney will definitely run you hard, won't he? Yeah, he will, Army. Uh, you know, times are real close today, and the track's a little bit slippery between cars, and uh, he's running pretty good. Not a very good smile on the face of Fred Shaver. We're coming back to Canfield. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Canfield Fairgrounds here in Canfield, Ohio, for the Dodge Monster Drive. We keep telling those photographers, stop shooting the food. I'm hungry, but we have business to take care of. Round two action coming up. Eric Meager is the man we're looking at right now, the young gun. They call him the kid on the circuit, but believe me, he's driving today like an old pro. And speaking of old pros, one of the big hitters is out. The national point chase will be affected, and this young lady right here could be holding a trump card. Pam Vodders out of Hagerstown, Maryland, she and her husband are really starting to make a move in this sport. Young Meagers comes up on the screen, driving a Bob Chandler rig out of St. Louis, Missouri. We know the truck can do the job. Let's see if this kid can. We talk about the heavyweight, we look at the Dodge banner. Fred Schaefer is the one you alluded to being out of the competition, DQ'd in round one. Here is Meager, fastest run from round one competition, going up against the young lady from Hagerstown in round two as Pam stages the boogie van. The prize, Major. the prize, the prize, Major Pam Potters again Whoa. has trouble getting it woed, but Pam Potters, 519, knocked out Eric Meager. Meager stumbled just a second on the start line, and that's like in a slapping contest. You make a bad move, she's going to hit you. Like it says in the back, a woman's work is never done. Keep an eye on him. Just a little bit of a hesitation right there, but Pam did not wait. She went to the other end big time, Gary. Well, we're finding that Pam and Mike Botters are dialing in the horsepower in this boogie band this season. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. She has some trouble getting it woed again, but hey, let's go down and visit with Pam Botters and Army. Ask anybody in Camphill, Ohio, and they'll tell you the boogie man and this young lady, Pam Botters, are for real. But, Pam, this weekend, you and your husband, Brian, Mike, brought another crew member. I think that's helped you both. Yeah, we um, went one step further with the motor and everything. Uh, we went out and we hired ourselves a top alcohol funny car. He works on them. His name is Pete Bronzine. He works on Tim Slagle's uh, funny car, and he's been a real asset to the uh, motor this weekend and to us as a racing team. He's done real well for us. Let's take a look again. You indicated that stutter right at the start for Eric Neger. Right there it is, Army. Yeah, but that Pete Bronzine horsepower didn't know about a stutter. It just went to the other end. Pam Botters has always been a good racer. She's starting to get what they call racer's luck. Now, speaking to somebody that has no racer's luck so far today, the Dodge Camp, their big gun went out in the first round. Now all the hope rests on the shoulder of this young man right here, Gary. Well, it's amazing that uh, Ken Deppie from Jefferson City, Missouri, is even here for this event after he tore the race truck up after the last show here on Trucks and Tractor Power. There's the Carolina Crusher, the independent of uh, Gary Porter. Porter in the Chevrolet. He goes up against the Rampage Dodge Hemi. Gary Porter out of Wadesboro, North Carolina, one of the leading independent drivers. He is the leading independent driver. Relies on the Chevrolet horsepower. Always falling up fine in the top five, but Deppie has got to have blood in his eyes. Look at that wheelie. Look at Deppy pull the trigger on the big Dodge Hemi and do a wheelie. He almost doesn't get a stop. Gary, that is what you call a Mopar migraine because both Dodges are now out of this program order advances. Yeah, Gary at 517 will take the Chevy on to the next round. Watch again. Watch the big wheelie in no man's land. That, uh, we talked about horsepower. That proves that Hemi engine will make the horsepower. Another somewhat rough landing has some trouble getting it woed. Let's go down that track side and talk to our winner, Gary Porter. We're standing with a guy that had the best seat for the wheelie of the year. What, what was going through your mind while he was up in the air like that? Or were you even aware of it? No, I wasn't aware of where he was at at all. You know, once the light turned green and I was just focused, you know, on my race over in my lane and I had no idea where he was at or what was going on. How does the track look to you today? Everybody wanted this track. They said they wanted a horsepower track. What's it like out there? Now, the track's really, you know, coming around uh, both lanes. I don't think they could be built any more even than what they are. And, uh, you know, it's a real good track. You know, it seems like the trucks are biting pretty good off the starting line. And, you know, we couldn't ask for a better track, I don't think. Dan Rudd's on the starting line. He's our points leader, winner of the last race here at Canfield. Now, Ruddy took out Dave Morris in the equalizer in round one. But first, let's send it down to Army with Ken Deppie. A lot of people call him the driver of the Rampage. I'm going to call him the Wheelie King. That had to be a weird feeling. I was kind of deja vu from, uh, you know, from the other day. 
Uh, luckily, this one didn't have quite as bad of a uh, finale to it. Well, of course, he refers to that uh, qualifying crash he had the last race out here at Canfield, so uh, no major damage, but uh, he'll be out of competition today as we take a look at Paul Schaefer and the Monster Patrol out of Portage, Indiana, northern Indiana in the Hoosier State. And, of course, a uh, fairly newcomer to the sport. He'll be taking on the Dan Runte out of St. Louis, Missouri, the Bigfoot organization. Now, Schaefer is a new driver in this sport, but he holds world records in uh, mud racing, so he's used to the horsepower. What we got to get him used to is this 10,000-pound truck. He runs a large salvage operation, like you said, up in northern Indiana. Meanwhile, on the other side of the slate, the power wheels you see at the Kmart and Walmart stores, they're sponsored Runty, who is your current national points leader, so this will be a good race. Indeed, it was a good race. Runte by about a half truck length and a 526 ET for Dan Runte. The Power Wheels Bigfoot. We'll come back and talk to Dan after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Dodge Monster Drags here at the Canfield Fairgrounds in Canfield, Ohio. Some of the final action coming up. But first, let's go trackside down to Army Armstrong and Dan Runte. Well, another round. You're still in this thing. It keeps getting tougher and tougher and tougher, though, doesn't it? It is tough, Army. The track's hooking up different every time we go out there. The right lane's actually digging some big holes. Lane choice has got a lot to do with it. I mean, I specifically haven't run the right lane, or the left lane, excuse me, but we might get our chance at it this time. We Carolina Crush, and we're going to go out there and put the Ford on top again. Well, it sounds like Gary Porter may like this track better than uh, Dan Runte with uh, Dan's comments there. There's the three for the semifinals. Don't see these trucks too often past the second round, but uh, there's Pam Botters and Kurt Dabney and the Carolina Crusher going against the Power Wheels Bigfoot. Yeah, and don't forget the last two meetings between Overkill and the Boogie Band, Pam Botters has taken the measure of Kurt Dabney. She has owned that truck. So we'll see uh, what happens here as we prepare for a semifinal action. But first, we go down trackside earlier. Army took a look at what it takes to land one of these monsters. Landing his 10,000-pound monster truck presents some unique problems, the problems being energy has a tendency to go in two directions. One of the main energies is absorbed through the shock absorbers. These Custer shocks designed out in California for off-road racing seem to be the hot hand for absorbing energy going one direction. But what you have to do is realize those shocks are only like 36 inches long. You can't stretch them all 36 inches. You have to limit their travel. That's what this strap is for. It's called a limit strap. And what it does, it keeps the shock absorber in the proper perspective so that it can do exactly what it's supposed to do. This strap keeps it from stretching one way, and the shock absorbers absorb the energy the other way. So take notes, we'll have a quiz on those straps. All right, there's a look at Overkill. Kirk Dabney will pull out to show you Pam Botter staging the boogie van. Girls against the guys. And, oh, it looks like Kirk by a nose, maybe. A 5'11". Yeah. Kurt went back to his crew chief, Marty Garza, and said, we got to have more horsepower. I think they did it. Well, watch the replay. Even here, still even in no man's land, but right here, it looks like Kirk Dabney does take the measure, and he's with Army. Both drivers seem to take a whole lot of time out there before you stayed. Why'd you do that? Well, Army, I'm trying to figure out each guy I raised, or girl in Pam's case, and Pam has a system that she makes me build a lot of engine heat. I'm trying to cope with it and adjust to the way she races. I'm not sure exactly what her program is, but it looks like we're able to pair ourselves with her equally. You know, engine temperature and the way that the truck leaves the line depends on how much fuel's in the motor. That's what we're working with. Smart driver army always knows the competition, be it an oval track, a road course, or here in monster truck racing. Here's a look at a past champion. Gary Porter, the independent, the Carolina Crusher, the Chevrolet. Now, uh, Gary will meet Dan Runty for the right to take on Overkill in the championship here at Canfield. There's a look at Gary Porter inside the cockpit, and there is a look at the power wheels, big foot of Dan Runty. 640 cubic inches, blower drive service, supercharged Ford engine in that lane. 500 plus cubic inches to the Chevrolet, but they think that the horsepower ranges are equal. Runty, national points leader, Porter. The privateer, always in the top five, always in the thick of things. He can mess up anybody's day, anytime. And it looks like the big four just uh, 
messed up the day for Dan Ronte as uh, something broke in the Ford. Gary Porter, a 5-12, takes the victory, and he will go to the championship round against the Overshell truck and Kurt Dabney. Look again, Army. Right here, something happens to the Ford. It laid down on him in no man's land, but Porter, you know, you take the win. So once again, Porter does take the victory, and he's with Army. You've always said you can run with anybody on a level playing field. I think you're proving it today. Yeah, I think so, Army. No, you know, the truck's been running really good out here with the big A auto parts and the Neil Chance converters in it. And, uh, you know, the Fulton Motor seems to be making a lot of power. And, you know, hopefully we can take this win today. It is a Ford and a Chevrolet in the finals from Canfield right after this break. Welcome back to Canfield, Ohio, for the finals of the Dodge Monster Drags. No Dodge trucks in the finals. A Ford against the Chevrolet. There is the Chevrolet of Gary Porter. But during our commercial break, there's been a uh, fluster of activity down there in the uh, pit area. Let's send it out to Army. Final time at Canfield, Ohio. And we keep telling you, this place is full of drama. No exception today. Gary Porter has made his passes back and forth. He's ready to race the Chevrolet camp. On the other side, the Ford, Kurt Dabney, they can't get that truck started. They've blown the starter, I believe, and there's some starter on the starter ring. There's a couple of teeth left. They're trying to get around to where it may catch one time and start the motor. If it doesn't, then the three-minute rule comes into effect, and the young lady, Pam Botters, would go to the line if the Ford doesn't start. Well, Army, the state of Ohio has not been good to Kurt Dabney. Recall that grinding crash he had at Lima early in the season. This would be his first final appearance since that crash, but he's on the clock right now. Hey, we can tell you the Dodge Monster Drags, like the four-wheel jamborees, are part of the special events performance series. This is the manufacturer's midway, and there's also several categories of show and shine competition. To find out when a jamboree or monster drag will be in your area, contact the special events promotion company and take part in this four-wheel fun. Talk about four-wheel fun, tough truck highlights, one of our favorites here in Canfield, the Big Out Jeep. This is one fast biggie. This is Jim Alt from the great state of Indiana. And I tell you, he always puts on a show. <laughs> Jim's got a new driver's suit and his crew's over hanging. Jim's a real cutie in his new driver's suit. Well, I don't think that's a uh, flame retardant driver suit. Oh, but it looks right cool. And that's all Jim cares about. Look Whoa! out. Hang on. He almost dumped that one. Jim Alt, always a crowd favorite in the tough truck competition. I have ridden with Jim a couple of times, and uh, that's quite an exciting uh, A-ticket ride. Better ye than me, Gary Lee. <laughs> well, lucky there. Kurt Dabney could not find the fire, as we say, and the uh, truck is being towed back to uh, his hauler, and that means the young lady from Hagerstown, Maryland, the Boogie Van and Pam Botters, will come back to take on Gary Porter's Chevrolet, the Carolina Crusher, for the finals. Pete Rosine, that man walking right in front of the camera could be the trick to this whole thing. Been around NHRA drag racing for years. He comes over to the team and says, hey kids, calm down, be cool. You drive the truck, I'll take care of the motor, I'll and we're jet, going I'll to the final. The That's right. That's the big difference right now is the jetting of the fuel. Actions speak louder than words. She's in the final. Well, let's go back down to uh, the track and let's talk to Kirk Dabney with Army Armstrong. Kurt, man, I hate to talk to you at a time like this, but this is your final. What happened? Well, Army, just like with all race cars, mechanical, we had a starter failure at the line. It's more than three minutes to put it in. Um, just nothing we can do, you know. It is a disappointment to run that hard and not be back. They should be us out there. Happens in every form of motor sport, so he has to be a spectator in the finals he should be racing in. There's a look into the uh, eyes and the cockpit. Gary Porter stages a Chevrolet against the Ford and the Dodge monster drags here in Canfield. This is for all the marbles. Oh, tough break. Pam Red Lights, Gary. Pam Red Lights, Gary Porter takes the victory. But Man. I'm telling you what, Pam Botters is coming on strong, and she will be a force to be reckoned with as the season continues here in the Penda Points Championship. You know, I'll guarantee you Gary Porter won a runner clean, too. There's a red light. It doesn't lie, but... Uh, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. She knew she had to cut a good light against the veteran, and she was a little too eager. Red light, she knew it. Back to the throttle, Gary Porter goes on to victory here in Canfield. I guarantee you there won't be an excuse either. Point standings, Dan Wright, he continues to lead over the dodge of Fred Schaefer. Eric Meager is third and a fourth, and Gary Porter and Ken Deppie. Let's go back and visit with our winner. Here's Gary Porter. 
Gary Porter proving once again a privateer still can be competitive. This takes a lot of heart and a lot of soul out there. Congratulations on this win today. Yeah, thank you, Army. Uh, you know, when Kurt pulled up there to the line, I knew that was going to be a close race, you know, and then he had mechanical problems there on the line, and the you know, boogie van had to come back. And she's been running really strong, and, you know, I was just going to try to give it all I had, and, you know, I hate that she cut that red light, you know, a little bit too close there and got disqualified. But, you know, we'll have to take them like any way we can get them. Well, the fans are always eager to visit with their favorite drivers as Gary Porter and the Pam Botters signing autographs in Canfield for Army Armstrong. I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video release from Diamond P Sports.